All right, you're good to go on, Skill. Cool. You're on. Heck yeah. Live. But let's see if the audio is okay, because uh, I can't yeah, host so. anything. <laughs> do things, do things that like are audio cued. Uh, why do I have a bracket at the end of my name on the stream? What? Oh. <laughs> I ain't got no question. bracket. I ain't got no bracket. That's the reason why FFC didn't work. Yeah, probably. Apply changes. There you go. Thanks. Alright, I'm, I'm ready, so... Audio's uh, not a robot, that's good. No. Uh... I'm ready on time when you are. Alright, three, two, one, go. Alright, hello everyone, uh, this is Hacking the Power Juju. Um... I'm gonna try to do a cool trick at the beginning here. I'm probably gonna miss it though, because it's frame perfect. Alright, yeah, I missed it. So, what I was trying to do is pause on like the first possible frame I can input anything in the game. Because uh, that lets me save during this cutscene, which you normally can't do, but I'm not gonna bother talking about it because I missed it. Basically, it would like save a minute. So normally in runs, you just reset until you get that trick, but there's a backup you can do. <laughs> so this is the tutorial. Uh, right off the bat, we're introduced to the worst character in the game, Flora. She's really annoying. So if we jump on like that platform up there, we get a really long cutscene, so I'm just gonna like try to clip through this wall. I haven't done this in like years, because I never messed that first trick up, so let's let's get this going. There we go, easy peasy. So now, I'm gonna do the same thing right here that I would have done at the beginning of the game, but this cutscene, whenever you touch the ground, another cutscene plays. But this time, the window for the cutscene is a lot more open, so it's a lot easier to do the save on this uh, cutscene. And the reason that I'm trying to save during a cutscene will become apparent once I reload this save file. I'm sorry I'm not like super enthusiastic because obviously normally I'm very enthusiastic but it's like 3 in the morning right now so I'm kind of tired uh, but so yeah I'm loading back into the tutorial except now I can just walk through walls so I'm just gonna skip the whole tutorial so that's pretty cool the tutorial normally takes like six minutes so it's nice that the game lets us walk through walls. I don't know why that works. It's something about storing text cutscenes thingy. I don't really know why any of the tricks in this game work, because we don't have any like smart people that run this game. It's just it's just me and some other people. So no one really knows. So yeah, as Flora says, we gotta go to the burial grounds to get the staff. Like all the cutscenes in the game that actually explain what you're supposed to do are skippable, and then all the ones that don't matter at all aren't skippable. So that's really nice. I'm glad. I'm glad they make it so we have to actually explain what I'm doing. So we're going to the burial grounds now. They're supposed to be like uh, a little this thing you have to do before you can get the staff. All of your ancestors are buried you gotta like uh, get these four golden teeth for some reason that like open up this big old tomb in the middle. See, she's gonna she's gonna point to him over there. You see that little shiny thing? That's a golden tooth. You need to get four of those. Um, I'm not gonna get any of them though. Because for some reason in this game, there's like a technique you can do called triple jumping, which is like that. And that makes it so I can just jump right over this pit. And that like saves like, I don't know, like three minutes probably. This, this game's really well made. You're not supposed to be able to do this triple jumping thing, it's just like abusing a mechanic. Involving the way that falling off ledges works, it's kind of weird. This is a plant. You need, we need to kill nine of these. Uh, there's, there's 12 total in the game. But we need to kill nine, because I guess they want to give you some options in case you don't feel like killing some of them. Um, the plant fights are pretty confusing if you don't know what's going on, and I'm not going to really have time to explain them. You're probably wondering why I'm not still hitting him. It's because he'll taunt at me and then I can just hit him like that and it instantly kills him. You can't actually kill him just by whittling his health down. You, ha you have to kill him while he's taunting and doing one of those big old hits like that. So... Yeah, the plant fights are kind of weird. Doing it in two cycles is basically the fastest you can kill it. Technically, you can do it a little bit faster, but if you get unlucky, then it ends up losing more time. So it's I usually just go for the two cycle. Uh, here's a here's a cutscene. This one's like two minutes long. It's a really long cutscene. I don't like this. But you have to watch this cutscene in order to get the staff. 
which is really useful. Not in the ways that the game wants it to be useful. It's useful for some glitches and stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of weird though, because there's a there's a staffless category for this game, and it's only like a few minutes slower. So I don't know. This game's weird. This game is really unoptimized too. I used to be the best at this game, but then like people who actually know how to be good at video games started running it, and now I'm not the best anymore. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to play well. Who knows? I've I've seen this cutscene so many times. It's a little sad. I should like figure out how much time of my life I've spent watching this cutscene because honestly, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, fun fact: if you do like that pause glitch that I did at the beginning of the game, if you do that when you activate this cutscene, uh, it does actually completely skip this cutscene and it gives you that walking through walls effect. But one, it doesn't give you the staff because you skip the cutscene, I guess, so it doesn't give you the staff. And two, there's no point in walking through walls on this level. There's no, like, walls that actually hinder you from moving through them. Except for one, but there's another really easy way to get through that. Alright, this cutscene's finally over. Uh, just kidding, there's actually another cutscene. <laughs> this one's not nearly as long, though, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they don't, Flora. The staff does, like, one extra damage. Now we can kill the Nurbles in like four hits instead of five. This is such a useful. It's, this is such a good weapon. I'm so glad we got it. But the main thing about the staff is that it lets you jump a little higher, and then later on we'll get uh, a power up that lets us shoot acorns out of it. Which we don't really use it for the shooting acorns. We kind of just use it so that we can get a glitch that lets us fly. But uh, we'll we'll talk about that later. Here's another plant. I should mention there's three of these in each level, and they are in four levels, so if you can do math, four times three equals twelve. Like I said, there's twelve plants. I'm only going to get two of them in this level for now, I'll get the third one later. Just because it's faster to get it later, probably, I don't really know. So there's two. Now, technically what you're supposed to do in this game is get nine of these plants, and then you like go turn them into this guy called Jubulba. And then he's like, cool, now, oh, I was, now, um, now that you got those nine plants, you can get these things called Yorbles. And then once you get a hundred of those, yeah, yeah, you have to get a hundred of them. Once you get all those, then you can get three moonstones, and then you go to beat the game. Um, fun fact, you don't have to do any of that in that order, because this game's really broken. But not in the ways that we want it to be. Uh, we can we could technically go and get the three moonstones right now, and uh, if the game allowed us to, we would be able to just go and beat the game. Unfortunately, though, the game when you when you bring the three moonstones to Jabal, but he's like, wait a minute, you didn't bring me nine plants. You got to bring me nine plants. So yeah, you got to go get them all in order. This really sucks because we could beat this game in like 15 minutes. If we could just get the moonstones first. I know, you might already know this, but, this but yeah, turns out we can't do that. So now I'm gonna go to Lower Tree Village. There's three more plants in here, but I'm not gonna get them yet. Instead, I'm gonna get that little acorn shooty thing I talked Dad, about before. I'm not seeing any people. It looks so like here's some sheep. There's lots of sheep in this sheep. game. Hey, Dad, look. It's a sheep motor. Oh, I'm just it's bringing this one over here because the these sheep will can work. run on treadmills and stuff. It's pretty cool. So we gotta bring this to an orangutan, these guys like pull down trees and stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff in this game, I'm probably not gonna explain it all because I've played this game a lot, unfortunately. I really shouldn't play this game so much. Uh, so now I'm gonna try to make this sheep go on here without picking him up. I suck though, so he didn't, he didn't run on it, so I gotta pick him up now. Alright, now I'm gonna go through here. Check it out. Use the acorn. Apparently, this is supposed to be a bag. It kind of just looks like an acorn to me. And now I'm gonna go right back to where I was, and I'm gonna start beating this level backwards. Because it's, it's, there's supposed to be like a wall over here that prevents you from going backwards. This whole level is like a giant circle. So like when you finish this level you come back through this side, but if I pick up this sheep and throw it at this wall at a specific angle right here, 
Um, I'll just go right through it, because this game's really well made. So now I'm actually going to open up that door that I just ran right through with this sheep. You can, you can make the sheep make noises by hitting the B button, I guess. So I'm going to bring them over to here and then open this up because I'm going to want to run back through it. This is going to seem like, why am I like running back and forth? Isn't, isn't this kind of slow? Um, you'll see why I'm doing this. Coming up is like my least favorite trick in the game. <laughs> it's, it's probably the hardest trick in like any game I've ever seen. Uh, it's a trick called throw hovering. It lets us fly, which is really cool because uh, if I get to the top of this tree on the on the left here, um, then I can actually just skip right to the Yorbo collecting phase of the game and not have to worry about the plants for now. But in order to get up there, I have to like fly, and this trick's really hard. Um, I'll, I'm kind of coming right up to it, so I'll explain it once I'm done with it. Basically, I'm gonna get item storage here by doing that. And I'm gonna take this part kind of slow because I'm bad. Jump up here. Alright, now I'm up on this thing, and now I'm gonna make some really loud noises on my controller. And this is probably gonna take several attempts because this is really not easy. It's okay, I promise it's good though. Alright, let's try that again. Alright, almost got it that time. We're gonna give it we're gonna give it another attempt. That was close, I just needed to do it like a couple more times. If I mess up this trick at all while doing it, uh it, I fall to my death and I have to redo it over again, so not to my death exactly, but close. Oh, it's slipping. Alright, let's give it one more attempt. This trick is the main reason why I hate running this game. <laughs> if you can't tell. I guess I may as well try to explain what I'm doing because it's killing my arm right now. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm hitting A and B on the exact same frame. And I have to make sure that I let go on that also that exact same frame, otherwise it doesn't work. And every time you successfully hit A and B on exactly the same frame, um, it lets you do an extra jump for some reason, because I think like the frame you throw an item in the air, it like puts you back, it considers tack to be standing on the ground again. So, alright, I'll just die here and then get the item storage again. Because <laughs> this trick is very, very demanding on your arm. Because it's not easy to hit A and B on the exact same frame consistently. Surprise, surprise. Alright, I don't want this guy to walk over here, actually. Walk over here. It's okay, my estimate is like... I really don't want this guy over here, because if... He can end up getting stuck, and then that would just kind of kill the run. I think he's fine over there. Yeah, he's fine over there. He's good. It's possible for him to, like, start walking to where I'm standing, and if he... Okay, this is... <laughs> I'll get it, don't worry. It's probably good that I'm spending some extra time here because if you don't get this like right away, okay, I'm just gonna throw a hover up to this part. If you don't get it right away, your arm does kinda start hurting. So you gotta you gotta take a little bit of a break. Normally you just, you know, like reset, but you can't really reset in a marathon. Oh, come on. It's like dropping the input right at the top there. The 
This is like the least marathon marathon safe truck ever, so you know. It saves a lot of time though. Oh okay, that was like a zip. That was kinda cool. Don't don't walk over here. He's gonna like This is the, this is the one right here. Ah, oh, come on. This game makes me very upset sometimes. If I was smart, I would have just had like a backup save after here in case I'm just like awful. Because this trick isn't really, it's not that hard. It's hard, but like once you know how to do it, it's not that hard to get it again. I know this is definitely not the most exciting thing in a marathon. Alright, this should be it. Alright, there we go. We had, I only took like an hour, right? Alright, we did it, lads. This, you see why I love running this game? It's the most consistent game I've ever played. Thankfully, that's the hardest trick in the game, so... I should still be well underestimate as long as I'm not the worst player in the world. Alright, so now that we're past that part, the run can actually get kind of interesting. Needles, you will both stop tech together. So yeah. Afterwards you I guess okay, so yeah, this is a I should mention, this is like a mini boss. This lets us get the spirit rattle. Oh, I messed that up. Thankfully this game understands that combat is probably like the weakest point in the whole game. So all of the mini bosses rely around some like cool, fun little mini game type things. I'm gonna wait for him to start running again. There's technically, oops, there's technically four pins and needles fights in this game. I'm only gonna be doing this one, I guess, actually. I'm gonna be skipping all the other ones. So now we got the spirit rattle. This is the best weapon in the game. There's only three weapons in the game, though, so that's not really much of a contest. Um, this lets us see Yorbles, which we need to get a hundred of. And basically, the game thinks that we now have all nine plants, except we still have to get them anyways, because this game sucks. <laughs> so now we can get these things, and we have to get a hundred of them. So, these are basically what the entire route revolves around. Because um, they're kind of scattered, there's around like 10 to 20 in each level. So basically, the entirety of this route is just finding the fastest way of getting all 100 of these. Which, believe it or not, is not a very easy task to route, so the route for this game is kind of constantly changing and updating. So, uh, if you're ever wondering, I, like, I've tried to make tutorials for this route, in the, or for this game in the past, but it always seems like every time I do, like five days later, the route is completely changed and the, uh, the route guide becomes irrelevant. If you're wondering what the game is, it is called Tech and the Power of Juju. There, now you don't need it on the on the stream. Alright, so now that I'm gonna get a mana power up if I don't mess that up. I'm probably gonna miss it, yeah. That was a really bad jump. You're supposed to get this by like swinging on some vines and stuff, but I'm too cool for that and I'm gonna like jump off of this trampoline. Whoops. Alright, that was really bad too. I'm gonna line up a little bit better this time. So 
if you do a nice lineup here, you gotta like hit the control stick in a really weird way there. Alright. <laughs> this isn't even hard. I should have like practiced this run before I did this, huh? There we go, easy game. Allows you to pick up mana without having to run right through as as Flora described, we can now pick up mana without having to run right through it. Which is cool. And now I'm coming up on a trick that skips like a minute long cutscene. But it's kinda dangerous. It's a very dangerous trick, so what I'm gonna do is make a safety save. Because if I don't do this trick exactly 100% precisely correct, uh, the game crashes. So, <laughs> don't ask me why this trick works or how it works. We just know that this is a pretty consistent way of doing it without crashing. What does the mana magnet do? Oh, well, you know, I think what it does is allows you to pick up mana without having to run right through it. I think that's, I think that's what it does. So if I stand right here put it in like that, I just instantly teleport over here, and then, yeah, Rubik's is actually the one who kind of helped find this. <laughs> he ran this game like a billion years ago. You can use this blimp when you're ready to go to Numa Dunes. And we had, like, when that was first discovered, we had absolutely no idea what was going on. And thankfully now there's a consistent way of doing it. I still just make a backup save in marathon runs that just on the off chance it does crash. Dunes, but there's much more here than just sand. Because it is still cans, possible. Ruins, spawns, if you don't like hit the normal exactly precisely. Sandboard, I bet you find so now I'm like too. sandboarding down some dunes. I don't, I don't know why. There's some yorbles here. Oops. Didn't grind on that properly. Alright, now I'm gonna go around this way to build up some speed get over this little hill here. Alright. This level is actually really, really precise to get these Yorbles. Mana- oh yeah. Mana Magnet lets you draw two cards. How could I forget? <laughs> so the main reason I'm actually coming to this level, these Yorbles are kinda slow to get. The main reason I'm coming here is for a juju power-up called Crazy Feet. And what that does is at the cost of one mana per second, it lets you run faster. So as you might imagine, that's a pretty cool thing to have in a speedrun. Running faster is always good. So I'm gonna slow down here. Alright, I'm just gonna immediately leave this level because there's nothing else I need to do there. There's more Yorbles I could get, but they're pretty slow. So now, as long as I hold the X button, I'm gonna run faster. Which is cool. What game is this? This is Tech and the Power of Juju. It's a pretty cool game. The speedrun kinda sucks though. Sucks to run. But it's okay, we're past all like the stupid parts. So now the run can actually be kinda cool. So now I'm actually going to go right back to Lower Tree Village, the level where I, my PTSD strikes me. The reason I'm going back there though is now I'm fast. The heck's banning my lad peeking boot. Alright, so now when I run fast, I can get the plants faster. And this way, because if you didn't know, there's actually Yorbles as well as plants in each level, but normally when you're getting the plants you can't see the Yorbles. So I'm actually going to go back here and get plants and Yorbles at the same time. And it's going to be efficient, because that's all we can do in this game, is just make stuff more efficient. We can't really skip much. Thankfully this orangutan did not get stuck thanks to my, my amazing foresight while trying to do the Spirit Rattle early trick. So the game did not get soft locked there. I mean, I guess it, I guess it really wouldn't be soft locked. I could still technically beat the game. It would just be really slow because I have to like go to an entirely different level. Because as I said before, there are 12 plants instead of nine, so I could just get those other three. All right. So I'm just gonna be running around and getting these yorbles. That's basically the gist of this game, running around and getting Yorbles. So 
So this is like a puzzle here. You gotta hit this monkey, who will throw like a coconut at this other monkey, who then launches this monkey from that tree to that tree. And then what I'm gonna do is hit this monkey again, not that monkey, this monkey. And that monkey is gonna hit this monkey. There's, there's a lot of monkey words. <laughs> and then the orangutan will walk to this tree. So that we can use this to go over there. I should have definitely like taken a nap before this run. <laughs> so now there's more plants. I'm gonna show off a cool little technique you can do here. It doesn't really work most of the time. But you can like jump cancel the swing animation for this. And it lets you hit really fast. But it's not it's kinda hard to aim. So it's not really that useful. So there we go. Rock on! Rock on indeed, Tech. You're such a positive little man. So continuing on through here, uh, you're supposed to like run around in a big circle around this tree to get here. But I can actually just jump up here, I guess. Don't worry, I think after all this great feedback, Milk will definitely put the name of the game on the layout next time. Next marathon. So yeah, as I was saying, you can't actually hit these guys. Well, you can hit them now, but it's it's just... It doesn't save any time to hit them right there. So you may as well just stand around. So now I'm going to do some more cool jumps. Don't die. I'm probably going to miss this. Not my guy, I'm just cool. So now I'm going to come to the uh, a little area that we like to call Thomas. I don't know why. There's three Yorbles here. Get that one on the way down. And then these two, if you're really good at the game, you can get them in one little swoop here. Oh, I'm so good. Now I'm going to jump around here. And I'm going to go back to my favorite glitch in the game, item or throw hovering. This trick is a lot easier when you don't have to do it uh, as high as uh, the spirit rattle skip thingy was. Like, stuff like this is easy. I make it look really easy when it's stuff like that. <laughs> oh, whoops. If you get hit by those, the game slows down. So don't get hit by that. So yeah. If anyone has any questions, because I'm really bad at explaining stuff, feel free, to, feel free to write them in chat, and if I actually look at chat, then I'll answer them. Nice. So that is five plants now. Okay, that's all the plants here. We should We're halfway there, now. with the plants at least. And there's just a few more yorbles in this level, and then we'll be on to the next level. And if this level is Lower Tree Village, who wants to guess what the next level is called? There's a little elevator right there that we'll be taking. That's a little hint right there. Why does Tack have feathers? Because okay, he's a little jungle boy. Here. We should try somewhere else now. So we're moving on to the next level. We're going up from Lower Tree Village, so... As you might be able to guess, this next level... It's called Upper Tree Village. It's pretty crazy, I know. It's supposed to be a baby's first Metroidvania. Uh, not at all. It's a collect-thon game. So right here... There's, like, I think four... Oh, there's no ground there, I guess. I didn't even know that. That's cool. What is, the, what is my personal opinion on the Nickelodeon television adaption of the beautiful game? Um, I, w I would rather wish that it didn't exist. It's probably the worst show on television. Don't watch it. People think that this game was based off of the show and that really upsets me. Because this game's actually sort of good and the show is trash. Keep trying. So. There's a few Yorbles I'm going to skip here, just because it's kind of slower to go there. This, motor is attached to that elevator over there. this uh, Upper Tree Village is kind of, like, completely full of nothing but a billion puzzles to get Yorbles. 
And since I'm just a legend, um, I'm just gonna be like skipping all of these puzzles by doing cool jumps and stuff. Oh, that was almost a cool jump. I've done this jump like three times in my life, so bear with me. There we go. So I'm gonna get that, and then for some reason if you grab the vine normally here, you actually miss that Yorble, so I gotta jump on it. This game is sort of- is not sort of good, exactly. I wish I never ran this game, this game sucks. So we used to get a few more Yorbles here by like, using uh, more throw hovering and jumping everywhere. But then uh, Deku Scrub, the world record holder of this game, is like, don't do that, it's slow. And so we don't do it anymore. So do you want to try that again? Hey, careful, Tack. It's a long way I should mention rope physics are like the worst thing ever in this game. It's no doshin, that's for sure. You can also like hit the sheep as you're running over here, but I'm really bad, so I'm not going to do that. Now we get to ride this nice little elevator up to here, where, you guessed it, there's more Yorbles. I was having trouble with that Yorble in practice, so that's good. Upper Street Village actually, I think it has like the second most Yorbles in any level. It's at like 23 or something. I'm pretty sure Chicken Island West has the most Yorbles. We don't go there though. Oh, we're almost at uh, Mountain Top, which is where like the cool part of the run is. This is like a big giant puzzle room right here. There's like a billion Yorbles in this room, and there's like it's supposed to be like some really confusing puzzles to get everything. But um, I'm a legend, so we're not gonna do any of the puzzles. I'm actually gonna do a cool little jump here that's- I'm probably gonna die if I try to do this because I've done it once in my life. Let's try to get it though, it's pretty neat. Oh, that was a sick jump right there, did you see that? Oh, I gotta throw a hover up here. I just like jumped through the wall. It saved like two seconds. That's never been done in a, in a run ever. This is the first time. So yeah, as you can see, throw hovering just kind of breaks a lot of this game. You're supposed to do puzzles to get up to these parts, but you can just kind of fly up them. It's a shame that uh, Spirit uh, spirit Rattle whatever thingy is the first time that you throw hover in this run, because it's also like the worst throw hover in the game. So it makes me look really bad at throw hovering, but I'm actually pretty decent at it, considering how hard of a trick it actually is. Uh, back when throw hovering was first found, we were all like, man, you could probably like throw hover straight to the top of Lower Tree Village with this, couldn't you? And then we were all like, ha, what a joke. There's no way a human would ever be stupid enough to try to do that in a run. And then one day I tried doing it in a run, and I was like, hey look, it's like humanly possible, kind of. And then from, from then on, everyone has to do it in runs now, and it's awful. That's, that's the story of uh, Spirit Rattle Early. I'm hovering without the Tingle Tuner, yeah. So I'm just gonna like, hover over this door and clip over the top here. Uh, Flora like, assumed we picked up that Tiki back there, but no, we didn't. We're just gonna hover over this gate instead. You're supposed to watch like a three minute long cutscene, which shows you breaking open that gate. No. We can just hover over it. So now we're going to Mountain Top. Which is a really, it's, I think it's my favorite level in the game. Alright, good night, Milk. I'm proud of you. So yeah. This you know, level's really cool. Lots of animals. I'm only gonna spend like two seconds in it though. This is the way to Powder Canyon. If you can get the snowboard, you'll be able to go there. This is where you can get so a So I gotta remember, the, I gotta get like five year olds in here or something. Make it to you. So first I'm going to go over here, get this Yorble. Uh, just a hot little reminder, or a, a notice. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to forget a little Yorble somewhere. Because this route is constantly changing and I'm currently like running a route that I think I've done one run with. 
so I'm probably gonna forget. That was a little trick called Rhino Crash s Skip or something. Save like a second. Normally you're supposed to have like a little animation of you falling off the rhino. But now I'm just I'm just riding on this big boy all the way over here, jumping off at this thing. And then I'm gonna make a cool little cool little jump around here. Hopefully. Yeah, I got it. And I get this thing. Now I'm gonna run over here, and up ahead is the entrance to Mountaintop North, which is where one of the moonstones are located, which is one of the endgame items. You're not supposed to get there until you have all 100 Yorbles. But if you're cool like me, you can just jump into this wall and then not get stuck there. And then jump up here, and you just kind of jump into the loading zone, and now we're going to Mountaintop North. This is an end game level, but we're going here like 10 minutes into the room. Uh, not 10 minutes, like, you Holy know. smokes! Right. Drylock has turned this entire area into a giant. So I'm gonna get item storage again. No doubt he doesn't want us to get the moonstone. Hey, Dak, is it just me, or do you hear music? I'm gonna run room? over here, and then jump on this. This is a. Whoops. These uh, mountaintop or these uh, moonstone levels are supposed to be like really hard. And this one is, again, more puzzles, and these ones are supposed to take a long time. But thanks to the power of throw hovering and cool jumps, we can just kind of skip the entire level. And at the end of this... Uh oh get off of there. Oh, okay, there goes item storage. Um, actually, kind of need item storage, I'm going to go back and get that. So yeah, um, at the end of these, each of these uh, moonstone levels, there's another pins and needles boss fight. But you know how I said I only, I'm only going to do one of the four? That's because this one I can skip, and then the other two moonstone levels I'm going to completely skip entirely. If I can get item storage, there we go. Alright. So you're, this, this boss in particular is supposed to be like a... Um, it's like a giant dance dance revolution type boss fight. And it's like it's basically just a two minute long auto scroller. So instead I'm actually just gonna skip it. And then, um with a cool trick called Moonstone Duplication, I'm gonna skip it again and then again. So I'm actually gonna do this part three times, so buckle in. It's gonna be exciting. Although well, actually right now I'm just getting this Yorba here. And then running back down. Honestly, it probably would have been faster for me to just get a different Yorble instead of running back to get item storage there. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, jump up. Water physics are not the best in this game. Right here, I'm gonna get a mana power up called uh, Summon Melon. This, should be a really useful this lets me get item storage discover. wherever I want, so basically means I can throw hover wherever I want. And so now, instead of doing that Dance Dance boss fight, I'm gonna grab this wall right here. This is a very long and intricate trick, by the way. Run out of bounds. This is also pretty hard, so hopefully I get it. I'm gonna try to clip through this invisible wall right here. Like so. Jump into this water. Swim out right about here. Jump once, jump twice. Go over here. One, two, three, four. So we're in a little bit of a circle. Go up here. Angle my camera a bit. And then this whole valley area here is where this Dance Dance Revolution boss fight normally takes. You're like standing on a, on like a moving platform through this whole valley. But instead I'm just gonna try to hit this loading or this spawn zone right here, and I did. And now I'm actually going to make a backup save. Again. Because what I have to do here, if I mess this up, um, I don't duplicate the moonstone, and the run's just kind of dead. So, I'm going to make a backup save so that doesn't happen. See, now I'm at the end of the boss fight, and I'm going to do this. Whoops, almost messed it up right there. There we go. So now... You can you heard the sound just for like a brief second of me actually picking this moonstone up, but you can see that it's actually still there. 
So if I save, this game takes a little bit to save, and then reload the game, um, the game will actually respawn me right there, but the moonstone will still be there. And also, I will have picked it up already. Yes, the, unfortunately, we don't get to do the dance dance boss fight. So you know how I said it'll spawn me right next to the moonstone? It does, but then it immediately teleports me out. Because it's like, hey, you just picked up the moonstone, let's teleport you out of here. Um, unfortunately, that means we gotta go do that again. So if you liked that trick, oh boy, get buckle up because you get to see it two more times. So I'm actually going to clip in here a slightly faster way by going up here and then jumping at these... Oh, uh, I think I'm still good if I jump over here. Yeah, still good. Okay, didn't die. Alright, so now I'm back in Mountaintop North. We got to reclip in here each time. Even though it might seem like this is kind of a waste of time going through this level three times, um, I'm not lying when I say that usually these moonstone levels are supposed to take a long time. Um, the other area we would go to for moonstones is Sun Temple, and that has a really long boss fight in it that we actually can't skip. So in order to do that one, that's actually longer than doing this really well. So yeah, now we get to do this again. Which sucks, because this is kind of a hard trick to do. It's not super hard. It's a lot more consistent than this boss skip used to be, because this boss skip used to be even harder than the Spirit Rattle early trick, because there used to be even more throw hovering in this. But thankfully, we found this really cool way of like swimming out of bounds. I'm actually not in water right now, the game just thinks I am, and that lets me do that kind of stuff. Because for some reason, if you're out of bounds, and you start swimming, and you like swim out of the water but you're still out of bounds and there's ground above you, uh, the game never makes you stop swimming, so you can just do that again. Or you can just uh, keep swimming, it's pretty cool. So we kind of found a way to like, eh, run around time. there. So I'm gonna make another backup save. There's, I shouldn't mess this trick up, it's really easy. Just in case though, just in case. These, these saves are really long, though. Alright. Oh, I actually did mess it up that time, so... Good thing I saved, right, lads? The window is... I don't know how wide the window is. It's like... It's probably like 10 frames or so. It's the same window that the very first uh, pause thing that I did was. What happens if you hit it so you get more than three moonstones? Then you have four moonstones. <laughs> the game doesn't really care how many moonstones you have. You can duplicate it as many times as you want. It's kind of funny. You could even duplicate this three times and then go to the other moonstone levels and pick up some more there. It do nothing happens. The game just kind of checks if you have three moonstones, at least, when you go to beat the game. So, <laughs> it's, it's whatever. So yeah, now we've duplicated that twice. So now we have two moonstones, and we're going to need to go back yet again to get it another time. So once again, it just teleports us right back out. Thankfully, this part at least looks cool. And it's kind of fun, I guess. So we're going to clip right back in it again. Alright, that was a little bit better. Camera, work with me. Camera's not very cooperative sometimes. So I'm actually going to go pick up a little feather right to the left here just in case, because I want to make sure I have some mana for that last jump. There's a blue feather there. For some reason, um, I guess not for some reason, blue feathers in the game always give you 10 mana, the yellow feathers give you 3, and the purple feathers give you 1. For some reason, there's only like two blue feathers in the entire game, though. I don't know why they're so rare. When in doubt, take the stick out. That's my favorite quote from this game. It's always, always applicable. When in doubt, just take your stick out. So 
So as much as I might be like kind of pointing out how not fun this game is to run sometimes with this run, um, I do actually kind of recommend this game. The community is actually really cool. It's probably one of my favorite speedrunning communities. It's very chill. It's pretty small, but everyone's really nice in it. So that definitely makes up for how awful this game is. <laughs> Alright. That should be it. Yeah. There is actually a chance that on that last jump there, you don't make it far enough to where you hit the trigger for this spawn, and you just spawn right back at the beginning of Mountaintop North, and you have to do that whole thing over again. So thankfully that didn't happen, and now I actually have three Moonstones. It doesn't say that I do, but I do. Is the community only you? Uh, at one point it was, but now there's, I think there's nine runs on the leaderboard right now. There's also some people that run TAC 3. No one runs TAC 2 because that game actually sucks. But yeah, there's, there's nine runs on the leaderboard. Um, not all of them are active runners right now, but there are other people also that are just a part of the community in general. So it's, it's a nice, cozy little community. It's a, it's a grassroots community built from the ground up, you know? So we're gonna get that little sneaky orbo right there. Bouncy pads are kind of fun in this game. Because uh, if you if you get item storage and you try to throw hover off of a bouncy pad, there's actually no limit to the like normally when you throw hover you have to hit A and B on the same frame. If you do it off of a bouncy pad, it doesn't matter if it's on the same frame. You can throw hover as much as you want forever. It's the easiest thing in the game. You can just fly wherever you want to go. The unfortunate thing is um, bouncy pads are very rare and. Um, and all the, people left along the only level. levels that contain bouncy this pads are Tax Village, the Hub World, to, okay? which is the Hub World, and then dry, um, they're also in Burial Grounds and Mummy Tombs, and neither of those levels is it useful to throw hover in. So <laughs> that trick is called uh, Super Throw Hovering, and there's nowhere in the run that it's actually useful. It looks really cool though. So if I'm like super ahead of estimate, which I don't think I will be. Um, I'll probably show it off, just because it's cool. Oops, I mean, I jumped too soon, and I'm dead because of that. The plant fights are very, very not nice to you if you mess up. Like, just hit stun in general is actually awful in this game. Because you will get stunned from the hit, but you're not invulnerable. You can still take damage, so you can just get stun locked really easily and die instantly. There we go. I should mention, um, for some reason the plants, when they die, they have a chance of doing a longer death animation, and it wastes a couple seconds, I don't really know why. It's just random. I guess just for casual playthrough, it doesn't matter at all, it just kind of, it jazzes things up. But for, uh, speedrunning, it kind of sucks, whatever, it's not a huge deal. So now I'm going to jump through this hole, and I'm going to be a, a boss and just Ooh, land luck. right on that mana power up. That gives you longer life, which means that you don't die as fast, which is cool. Because I suck at this game, so not dying is a good idea. So now, I'm actually going to go to another level. I'm in Dry Rock, Cavern, Dry Rock Canyon right now. And I'm going to just clip into Dry Rock Caverns by going through the back right here. Whoops, almost got it. Just like that. You're not supposed to get in there if you couldn't tell, but I did. <coughs> My throat is getting super dry. <laughs> Should have brought some water. So this is Dry Rock Caverns. Um, if you're a Deku Scrub, the world record holder of this game, and you're insane, you would actually do one of these caverns out of order when it's pitch black and you can't see a single thing because it's slightly faster. Um, I've never done that before, so I'm not going to even bother trying it. It's probably... It's, it is insanely hard because it's this level is already really, really hard technically. There's like, there's like a lot of stuff you gotta do. There's a lot of durable dur dodging and stuff. Um, and doing that in the pitch black when you can't even see the platforms is very hard. 
But yeah, the only reason I'm coming here is for Yorbles. There's a lot of them. You've become the light. Let's find our way back out of here. Oh, we should. So I'll be going through the. There's three caverns. I'll be going through the first two, and then I'll just kind of dip into the first or dip into the third one. Where am I going? Just to get one more Yorble. Because if you actually complete all three of the caverns, then you kind of have to watch a long cutscene that shows another mana power up unlocking, which is the stunner power up, which is uh, not useful in this category. So if you don't bother getting it. It's, most of the juju power-ups in this game are absolutely useless. They just, like, are different methods of doing damage, and almost all of them do less damage than your stat, than your club. Or the spirit rattle, I mean. And they also take mana to use, so it's like, it's, it's a waste of time to get. They're completely useless. Like, there's Stunner, I think it costs 20 mana, and you just, like, jump up and down and do a little bit of damage to all the enemies around you. It's useful for getting item storage if you don't have the staff. So you do get stunner in the staffless category, but not in this one, because you get the staff, obviously. And there's another one that's like, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of them. Anytime you run out of mana with crazy feet, uh, you can make some cool noises. It's pretty nice. Maybe there are some feathers nearby? You should hope that I don't run out of mana anymore on the run, because I'm very tempted to do it any time I do run out of mana. I'm going to wait a little bit for this light to catch up, just because I'm bad. Alright, so now we're halfway done through the second cavern here. We're just going to make our way down. For some weird reason, whenever Tack has this light around him, he can't roll. Like, you can do the roll input, but he doesn't go anywhere. He just kind of sits there, so I, I don't know why. You need more mana to use this juju power. Maybe there are some feathers nearby? That looked really awful. What did? The the noise that the the mana thing makes? Oh, did you put the put the category on the or the game name or something probably? Shit, I don't want to jump over there, so I'll die if I did that. Maybe there are some feathers nearby? Need more, need more mana to use this juju power. Maybe there are some feathers nearby? So yeah, not having crazy feet kinda sucks. The mana is a little bit tight in this route. Just because oh, okay. Nerval hit me while I was jumping. It's actually <laughs> really bad to die in this level because it gets really disorienting if you're not like following the route. It gets really confusing where you respawn. to use this juju power. Maybe there are some feathers nearby? Maybe there's some feathers nearby. Right, so that was those two caverns, and now as I said, I'm just gonna take a quick peek into the third cavern and get the first Yorble there. I'm gonna try to, like, save my mana a little bit from this point. I don't... I don't need to save it, I don't think. But I mean, I may as well. Rats. Keep trying. So now I can just leave. And now I'm going to go back to Dry Rock Canyon, where I'm going to finish getting the rest of the plants, as well as some more Yorbles. And then we'll be done with that. So I'm going to quick get this one up here. Whoops. There we go. Right, so yeah, now I'm getting a little bit more mana again. Alright, come on. Come on, Tech. If I can make this jump, you can grab that without having to land on the stairs. This plant is a little bit hard to get the two-cycle kill on. Sometimes he does that. Okay, I don't think I have him quite down yet. I might... Yeah, I think he's good. I'll get the two-cycle on him. How is Yorble formed? That's a good question. Alright, once again, got the long death animation. It's not a... It's, it's whatever. I generally get it one or two times a run anyways, so... 
as long as you get it the same amount of times, it's not like it loses time at all. This Yorval, that ledge is surprisingly hard to grab for some reason. And the last plant in this level is right up here. This plant's pretty easy. They're all kind of exactly the same. It's just that some of them have little vines they swing around the bottom, which make it hard to hit this guy's bottom part at this phase of the fight. Because in some of the plants they have a little vine swinging around that like kills you if it touches you. So, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Oops. There we go. If you're standing too close to him, he actually won't start taunting. So you have to stand a little bit further away. Check it. Check it. Alright. Okay, that's all the plants here. Yeah, there's a lot of weird names in this game. There's Yorbles, Nurbles, Jivolva. They're all they're all kinda weird. We have these two yorbles here. Over there, off in the distance, you can see the entrance to Sun Temple, which I mentioned earlier. I'm not gonna go there. We already got three moonstones, there's no reason to go there. You're supposed to go there, because you're not supposed to be able to duplicate the moonstones. But we can skip it. I'm gonna land on this rhino. Oh, I missed. I'm, I'm good at this game. In this part, um... If I didn't miss any orbals, I should be at 82 at the end of this. Um, no, I should be at 80, and it looks like I will be at 80, so that's good. I didn't miss any orbals so far. <laughs> that's the main dream right there. They're actually surprisingly easy to miss. There have been many a runs lost by many runners to just getting to the end of the game and having 99 Yorbles. <laughs> so yeah, there we go, there's 80. We're on track for them, that's good. Now I'm going back to Tax Village so that I can go back to Burial Grounds. And, uh... So this is the moment that I'll be going back and getting that one plant I skipped earlier. And I'm also going back here so that I can go to everyone's favorite level, Mummy Tombs. It's it's the greatest, honestly. Just wait until we get there. You'll definitely see why it's the greatest level. That sheep got in the way, that's cool. The rolling is actually kind of tricky to do well in this game. <laughs> Because once you start a roll, you are absolutely dedicated to finishing that roll, and you can't turn or anything mid-roll, so if tax collision even, like, glances against the slightest thing, uh, you just completely stop in your tracks until the roll's over. So it's usually better to do a triple jump. <laughs> Mommy Teams was my favorite as a kid. Yay. That's true, it's no fun guy forest, but, you know, it does. It does its deed. So there are a couple of Yorbles in this level that I'll be getting. That almost missed it. We're back in burial grounds if you can't tell. But now there's more enemies here because whenever you have the spirit rattle there's actually more enemies. It's not like it really matters. Whoops. So this jump you're supposed to need the staff to get up to, but like I said earlier I was able to get up there with the triple jumping. That's kind of how they like section this part of the level off before you get the staff. So over here is the last plant we'll be killing in the run. I think there's actually less enemies in that little bridge part right there. If you have the spear rattle, that's interesting. Because they replace one, like three of the purple nurbles with one blue nurble, and the blue nurbles throw coconuts at you. So the game's like, yeah, these guys are probably harder, I guess. The Lumos are actually really annoying in a bit. Alright, so there's the last point. We got nine now. So now, if we were playing this casually, we would now be able to go and get the Spirit Rattle. But we got that like an hour ago. So. 
As I was saying before though, even though we can get everything out of order, we can't turn them in out of order, which means we still have to get everything. <laughs> which is one of the reasons why this run is still so long. It's, it is the reason why this run is still so long. So now I'm going to Mummy Tubes. Um, if you couldn't pick up on it earlier, me saying this was my favorite level was actually sarcasm. This is the worst level. I will not lie when I say that this is the most boring level in the whole game. By a lot. All we gotta do is bring these mummies to their tombs, right? Plot twist, there's four mummies, and it's they're all of them are escort missions. And there's four of them. And they take a long time each. So we have spent a long time trying to figure out how to skip this level. Because we don't actually need anything in this level. Or there's Yorbles along the way, I guess. There's some. But there's nothing in this level that's like, yeah, we need this. The only reason we're going here is because we need to go to the level after this one. And it just so happens that this level in particular takes a billion years to finish. So right here we're gonna get like one Yorble. I think there's a total of ten in Mummy Tombs. There's one over here too. I'm over exaggerating a little bit. It's not that bad of a level. It's just that I I personally at least have put so much effort into trying to skip this level. I figured out how to like clip into the fourth tomb and bring <laughs> this is a good example of why this level sucks. I've been able to clip into the fourth tomb and bring that mummy all the way to the end to try to see if it's just like the last mummy that makes it to the level end open, but no. The game actually just soft locks if you do that. So <laughs> looks like you do have to get them all in order. Much like uh, you know, the plants and the yorbles and all that. It's a common thing a theme among this game is that it hates speedrunning. So not only do these guys run really slowly, um, they also like fall over for a long time if they take damage. That's a cool skip right there at least. You're supposed to like knock this mummy out on a bridge thing, like a little floating platform that moves them over that gap. But if you jump in a specific way, the mummy actually just kind of walks over thin air. So that's at least cool. <laughs> We kind of got a grasp for like the very minuscule cool things in this level. Because there's not a lot of them, and they're very spread out. Alright, don't worry guys, we are a quarter of the way through this level. Oh boy. Thankfully each tomb has its own like theme, so it kind of like spruces up the, the scenery a little bit. The last tomb's theme was, you know, just kind of like a generic tomb, you know, because it was the first one, I was just kind of introducing it. This, te this tomb's theme, well, we'll get to it in a second, are you ready for it? It's a lava tomb. It's the same exact tomb, but with lava in it. Isn't that cool? It's spicing things up very well. So I'm going to get the very sparse Yorbles in this level because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> I should mention there's also a cool glitch I just got there called ISG. The infinite spirit rattle glitch. <laughs> it's completely useless. It just makes it so that anytime you like run into something you hit it without having to swing your weapon. Pretty great. You only need it one time. So the cool kind of trick in this level is pushing the mummies. Doesn't that sound cool? You can push them onto these lava platforms while they're still standing up, and it makes them run right away instead of waiting two seconds. Man, this level's full of super exciting stuff, isn't it? So there's lots of little baby puzzles involving the mummy walking on fire. Pretty exciting. I gotta actually run back here so the mummy doesn't deload, unload, whatever the word is. <coughs> Just 
stand on this button. Just chill out. Push the mummy a little bit. The mummy's hitbox is actually really slippery, which makes it hard to push the mummy. So we can't really consistently push them everywhere. If those nurbles hit the mummy, he falls over, and it's pretty cool. So if I'm really good at this game, I can actually push the mummy onto this platform, which makes him go right away. It's pretty cool. Very interesting. But careful, because if you push them just slightly the wrong way, you'll actually fall in the lava, and you have to do the whole section over again. So I like to be a little bit careful in the last, the last spot there. So now I'm bringing this mummy out, and we're almost halfway done. Man, I can already see the finish line. This, this is really the level that kind of shines in this run. It's really what makes this speedrun great. It's definitely my favorite. In fact, it's such a cool level that most runners have four splits for this one level. It's that cool. That's how you know a level's good when you have to make four splits for the, for the individual level. Memories, yeah. Alright, now we're on to the third tomb. This one's theme, this one's pretty special. It's also a tomb, but it has darts in it. Very cool thing. Very individual. Very exciting. There's one Yorble. The Yorbles per minute in this level is definitely not very high. Oh. That's what happens when you land on a ledge, but uh, you kind of land on the side of it, and Tack decides he just doesn't want to jump sometimes. Oh, it happened again. But that time I was ready. I was expecting it. So there's a second Yorble. Pretty exciting. But wait, guys, it gets more exciting, because in this tomb, there's three Yorbles. <laughs> I know, I know, it's exciting too. I, I really like that part. Look at that, there's a there's a third Yorbo right over here. Exciting stuff. So now we get to go and get the mummy. Just gotta run over here. Oh, you guys are you guys are really gonna like the cool little trick that this level has. It's it's a really exciting one. This one's probably my favorite. It's really cool, you know, that each of these tombs has its own, like, special speedrunning strat in it. Keeps things spicy. So this part, there's, like, a little gap over here that the mummy's supposed to walk on these this platform that shoots darts at him. But if I push him over here, I can make him walk on the side of the gap, and he doesn't lose the two seconds to getting shot by the darts. It's really exciting. I like this tomb a lot. That's my favorite trick right there. So now we just get to bring this mummy back, where every time he gets shot by a dart, he like stops for a second. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Thanks for the pog chance, it's really exciting. Now here comes the challenging part. Trying to lure this mummy while he's constantly stopping over this ledge, while staying far enough away that the mummy keeps running at you instead of walking. And also making sure you don't make him walk over a, over the edge. That was pretty exciting. Just hit these nurbles on the way out, just because we can. We need that one extra mana, that's really going to help us out later on. Now we're almost out of here, and guys, guess what that means? We're almost three quarters of the way done. I know, it's it's just been going so fast. I, I, It feels like it was yesterday when we started this level. It feels like it was just yesterday. But you see, that, that little, this spot right here is pretty special because there's nurbles surrounding this little uh, platform thing. So you gotta make sure to clear those guys out before you put the mummy on there. 
Very, very spicy, very exciting. And now we get to go to the last tomb. This one's my favorite. This one, unironically, has some cool skips in it. <laughs> so this first part, there's a little yorble off to the right here. That's kind of tricky to get. You're supposed to have the mummy with you when you get it. But if I lure this nerble in the right way, I can make him stand on the platform. A little button there. As long as he doesn't get killed by those coconut nerbles, and I can jump up here and get the yorble. That's one trick. This level's got like five tricks in it. It really like gets spicy near the end. It's exciting. So right here, I'm gonna pull some like Indiana Jones stuff. Oh, step on that button. I'm gonna go fast here. You gotta go fast at this part. Get this yorble and just zoom right under the door as it's closing. That's super exciting right there. Now we're into the last little area. We're gonna swing on some ropes all Tarzan style. Get this yorble. We should try somewhere else now. We should try somewhere else now. I would love to, Flora, but we're not done quite yet. So now, let's bring this guy. Now this the flavor of this tomb is a little cool because when you hit this mummy, his head falls off. That's that's pretty exciting. And so the mummy actually runs toward his head instead of you. And so, if I put this head right underneath this brick here, these stupid flying nerbles would get out, get out of here. Just, just get out of here. There we go. Alright, put the head there. Now the mummy's gonna run into this little corner here. So if I do this, and jump up, it's like a little elevator, and I skip this whole giant puzzle in this room. Brings the mummy right up. So now, throw this little head over there. Mummy will just kind of run that way. Step on the button. That puzzle's pretty easy. It's, it's a baby game. Everyone's saying morning in the chat, and it's making me upset because it's, it's still very late at night for me. I need to go to sleep. But yeah, we're basically done with this tomb now. Which is exciting, because you know what that means? You know what that means, guys? I'm really excited. You know what that means? We're almost done with this level. It's exciting stuff. <laughs> so all we gotta do is bring this little mummy over here. And then, you know, honestly... I gotta commend all of you. We, we're, we're about done. Everyone here has successfully made it through watching Mummy Tombs. That's that's a feat that not many can say they've, they've managed to do. And so now, we can go on to the level that's actually important for beating the game. Not only does this level contain the rest of the Yorvals that we'll be getting, it also contains something called Lox Spirit. Which is something that, along with um, the hundred yorbles, is what we need to turn in. And so, are you excited, guys? Once we're done with this level, we can go to the final boss, and this game will finally be done. We can actually go on to like good speed runs. I'm excited for that. So this level's little little quirky mechanic is these little spirit gate things, which every time you run into them. Makes a big like earthquake, and then suddenly you can see all these cool buildings and stuff, and you can run through them. Oh, and coming up is my favorite part. It's the trick that I've never practiced. I mean, I've practiced it, but I've never been good at it. So if if I can't do it, I'll probably just start throw over. But there's actually an invisible orangutan right there because I think it's dead or something. And so it's a spirit. It's the spirit of the orangutan. So this orangutan can actually kind of screw you over if he waits too long to pull the tree down. Yeah, it's almost time for balloon skip. It's really exciting. But first, I'm going to jump right here. Oh, I grabbed the ledge. I'm really good. If I don't grab the ledge and fall down there... Um, I can actually walk around during this cutscene, but it doesn't matter because that cutscene takes two seconds. 
but I want to watch that cutscene because it lets me put my spawn point over here. So, oop, I missed that. I should probably look where I'm jumping next time. I totally ran off there just to get away from that nerval. Alright, there we go. So now it's time for the easiest trick in the game. This trick's easy. It's called Balloon Skip. You're supposed to, like, run around this whole area collecting three of these balloons and giving them to Party Boy or Dead Juju. Wow, you can float really far Putting them in that things. little green thing. But what we can actually do is if you jump, like, at a specific angle right here. Ah, oh, first try, boys and girls. Easiest trick of little in the game. You can skip that whole section by doing that. So shoot that thing. Balloon skip. That unironically is really hard for me to do. <laughs> I'm really bad at that skip, so thankfully I got that first try. Like that, that your jump there has to be absolutely perfect, otherwise you don't have enough height. But boop, skip, slip. Um, yeah. So these rams are supposed to like run at you. You can just kind of jump because they can't see you when you're in the air. I guess. I, I don't know why. <laughs> That ram's like supposed to be guarding you, but you can just jump over him. Isn't that trick illegal? Probably. It's so good. Alright. So this will be the, the last actual island of this area coming up, I guess. Once this orangutan pulls the tree down. We got this one island, and then there's like a quote-unquote mini-ish boss fight that I'm just gonna have to skip. So I'll get this thing, and then it's gonna be exciting because we'll finally get our 100th Yorbal. Are you ready for this, guys? Are you ready for the 100th Yorbal? I'm excited. It's a big moment in this speedrun. Here we go, boys. Oh. Looks like that was the 99th Yorbal. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, I can talk. Don't worry, though, guys. I'm just joshing you. The hundredth Yorbal's actually right here. Aren't I the funniest yes. man alive? No one's ever done that joke before. Top of this quest. I'm so You're original. All right. Lock spirit from the spirit world. So you can just jump over that wall. It's pretty cool. According to Flora, we finished half of this quest. Thankfully, we're actually more than halfway done. So you're supposed to kill these three big boy nurbles, but um, if you're good at the game, you can just kind of throw a hover over this. This is like the one time we actually use summon melon in the run. This is like the last throw hover in the game, so that means I'm going to take like an hour doing it. There we go. So that skips the whole fight there. Yeah, that's that's throw hovering. It's not an easy trick. You can you can watch my spirit rattle early section of the run to see how great I am at it. Totally. So this is Locke. I think this is the first time we actually see him in the run. He he's dead. I think we were like getting his spirit or something. I don't, I don't know. We skip all of like the important story cutscenes. So yeah. So coming up is like a big giant spiky hedge maze, and you gotta bring this balloon through it, and it's like really windy, and if the balloon like touches the sides of the maze at all, the balloon pops. There, there's the spikes, it's very scary. So you have to like do the whole thing over again, it's really hard. Um, usually takes me about like uh, 70 minutes to do this part, so hopefully I can do this pretty quickly. This is like definitely the hardest maze in the whole game. You totally can't just, you know, fly to the end of it. Definitely can't do that, so don't worry about it. Definitely can't just run on top of the hedges. Alright, so... Now we can go turn in every single item at the same time to Jabulba, and he's like, alright, you can just go to the final boss, so... Yeah, time will be soon. Probably, like... Three or four minutes, depending how bad I am at the final boss, so... Whoever's on time should get in here, if they're not already. Because this is the final boss, there's like three phases. Um, 
attack. It's normally pretty long, but thanks to Deku Scrub, the world record holder of this game, God bless his soul, uh, we can just like skip this entire fight. It's pretty cool. He's, there's supposed to be like three phases of running around, hitting these bunch of plants, and then like turning into an animal, running to the next island, hitting more plants, and so on until you get to the end. So what I'm gonna do is hit all but one of these plants, jump over here, jump around like an invisible wall thing, don't jump in that hole, jump to the last platform, trigger this phase of the final boss, and then shoot this last plant, and then the game's like, oh, you finished your current phase. And you're on phase three, so that means you finished all three phases. So, that's the main part of the final boss done. Now Claylock, that dude, turns Flora into an orangutan for some reason. I don't know why. This game doesn't make sense. And then she, like, thinks, I have a good idea, Tech. Let's fling you into this giant, pulsating, magical plant. That's a good idea. Time will be coming up soon. And now Tech has magic powers, because that's, that's how it always works. Now I, I swing my club, it turns Claylock into a sheep for some reason. And then I bring him over to Flora. Press a button, and then... Time. That was the greatest game in the world right there. 120-49. <laughs> That was an awful run, and I'm still like 10 minutes below my estimate, so I, I probably didn't need to be that generous with it, but yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm, I'm sure you were all blessed by the, the presence of this run in this marathon. Thanks for playing children's games for us. Hey, of course, I always love playing this children's caveman video game.